Hello and welcome to Growing in the Garden State. My name is Tony and I'm from the Northeast Organic Farming Association of New Jersey. And I am one of the team members that's been given the opportunity to utilize Drumthwacken, the historic New Jersey governor's mansion, as a teaching ground to help ensure that the people of New Jersey know how to grow and raise their own food. Now in this episode, it's gonna be all about tomatoes. New Jersey and tomatoes, that is a legacy that goes years and years back and will continue on into the future. But tomatoes have some very specific needs that I wanna make sure you're all aware of. So it all starts with a seed. We like to acquire our seeds from High Mowing or Johnny's or Fedco or, or other organic seed companies. Now, something to think about is are you growing tomatoes out in the field or are you going to grow them in a hoop house or some kind of protected environment? Now, once you've decided where you'll be growing your tomatoes, then you can start looking through the seed catalogs and deciding what seeds will work best for you. There's so many colors and shapes and tastes, so take your time and you know don't go too crazy and buy all the different flavors. Try to just start with a few. Now most folks here in New Jersey in growing hardiness zone six or seven, we tend to start our seeds in trays a little bit earlier in the season to get them an opportunity to, to start and grow into little small plants and then we'll transplant them outside or into the house where they'll be growing later as they've matured. And once it's time for them to be transplanted and make it out into their final growing area, there's some other things you need to think about. Now, tomato plants in full bloom, full fruit power, they get heavy. And if they don't have some kind of structural support, they're just gonna flop over on themselves. So most people will do either outdoor they'll put posts up and some kind of structure that they can trellis and support the plants or if you're in a hoop house you'll often hear about single or double leaders uh, usually you'll see strings kind of hanging from the ceiling and people will train the plants to grab onto and be supported by these strings hanging from the roof these are gorgeous <laughs> and maybe we can even show how uh... So you can see in these these transplants how the, the tomato, the main stem, will send out roots really forever. <laughs> so one of the things about tomatoes, as Ariana was saying, is that the, the roots, the stems will grow roots, which is wonderful because you can take advantage of that and to create a massive root ball. Um, root system for your tomatoes that will help them to grow really, really strong, really well. So you're just, when you get your um, tomato out, whether it's in a cell or not, you're just going to gently tease the roots because you want them sticking out a little bit. You don't want to damage it, but you want them sticking out. And we're actually, you don't have to strip the bottom leaves off, but I, I, I do sometimes. And the reason we're doing that, and we're just going to set those aside. We're actually going to pinch off any flowers because behind the flowers come tomatoes and we don't want the energy going to the tomato straight away. We want it going into the root system to create a very strong plant. So we're actually going to pinch out any of these little suckers. This is actually quite a big one. We're going to snap that out so that we're not growing more than one stem at this time. We want all the energy. We're going to pinch these flowers. We want all the energy going to the root ball. So we're going to take the root ball, having been teased, and we're actually going to lay the plant down. I'm just going to dig this out just a touch more so it's nice and deep. And everywhere that you stripped it, we're going to cover the entire thing. You break these extra soil balls up. You're going to cover that entire stem and the root ball. And then put in your, these will actually be trellised with a simple string system, so I'm not gonna trellis it right now. So here at Drum Thwacket, we don't have a whole lot of space, so we've decided we're gonna use a trellising system that uses the Florida Weave method. So the Florida Weave method is when you have your posts and your plants, and as the plants grow, 
you weave string between the plant and the post and the next plant and the next plant and the next plant and the post and then back around. So you're kind of creating this zigzag weave that holds the plant upward. And as it grows taller, you'll need to keep adding another round of weave, another round of weave. So as it matures and gets bigger and bigger, it can hold itself up. So let's talk about pests and disease. Tomatoes are extraordinarily susceptible to bacteria and fungus. Uh, if, if it rains or if you are wet or oily and you touch the leaf, that transaction of moisture or skin oils onto that leaf can be so detrimental to the health of that plant. Those leaves are just so sensitive that if they get bacteria or fungus on them, it'll be absorbed into the plant and eventually kill the plant. Most people are familiar with the term uh, blight, early blight, late blight. There's all sorts of different types, but what it is is that some kind of bacteria or fungus has gotten its way onto the leaf, probably because it was too moist and wet and didn't have enough air circulation, and then turned into a disease and an issue. So one of the most important things for your tomatoes is air circulation. So you need to prune, get all the little suckers, trim the, the low stuff off of the plant so air can flow through. And as that air and wind flows through, it dries off the leaves and minimizes the chance of these blights and other diseases to occur. And another important thing to watch out for is what's called tobacco mosaic virus. Now, this sounds pretty wild, but if you know anybody who smokes cigarettes, even if they're not smoking a cigarette in your garden, which they shouldn't be because of what you're about to hear, if they just have the nicotine tobacco resin on their fingers and then touch the plant, if the tobacco that they had is carrying the tobacco mosaic virus, they can not only create a disease into your plant, but that can then get stored into the soil, preventing healthy tomatoes from ever growing in that spot again. Which now leads me to your tomatoes and your eggplants and all your other solanaceous types, they can't be planted in the same place year after year after year. They actually need to be cycled through to minimize any kind of disease that's been stored and absorbed into the soil during its growth. Now, most people use a three-year rotation cycle. So if you have your tomatoes here this year, then you got to wait another two years before you bring it back. Now, in those other two years, you should still plant other things there to kind of help repair the soil. If you're lucky enough and you can plant beans there, beans are really great at adding some nitrogen back into the soil. And, uh, and, and there's a bunch of other options, but just make sure that you're rotating your solanaceous, your tomatoes, your um, eggplants and peppers to other beds throughout that three-year cycle. Well, thanks again for watching Growing in the Garden State. I hope you're getting all sorts of nutritious knowledge bombs and, and you're getting excited about growing your own garden and your food. It's such a wonderful thing and I'm so glad that you're on this journey with us and I hope that you'll help share this with other folks to make sure that they can grow their own food too. So it's up to us. Survival is up to us and to the food that we grow. So thanks for watching.